I'm back. I feel well. Still recovering a bit, but I feel well. You can expect video uploads again at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Tuesday going forward. You can get builds as good as this one with almost no wasted stat distribution across the board just by using DIM and paying a little bit more attention. Today I'm going to show you how to spot those and then the next video is going to dive right into the loadout optimizer and show you exactly how to do it very easily and all of the tips and tricks that I found along the way. So a huge shout out to DIM. This team is absolutely incredible. I appreciate you very, very much. Last thing before we go thank you so much for helping me crack 500 subs on youtube for three months strong i'm loving it i hope you're enjoying the content and i wanted to do something kind of fun at the start of some of my videos this is a jar at my house i filled it with some timbit cereal or something like that guess how many are in this jar put it down in the comments and the first person to guess it right i will get in touch with you and you'll be the first winner of a small prize on this channel here's a little physical proof that this stupid thing exists you see this here it is I don't want to give you too much time to look at it, but there it is in the picture. Let's dive right into the video. All right, so I get asked a lot about my stat distribution. Oh, a TTV motherfucker! And it's usually the fact that this adds up to a total of 36 stat gears, if you will. Now, I am using Powerful Friends on here for a plus two, so technically this is only 34, but I've actually had builds without Powerful Friends that were 35 and 36 before on my Hunter and on my Titan. The other question I get asked all the time is how do I have so few wasted stats? And what they mean by that is the fact that, like, look at these 60, 60, 100, they're right at zero on the dot. The only way wasted stat distributions I have are on these two with 61 and 41 and they're only one a piece so a total of two. A lot of people think that that's just pure luck but it, it isn't. It's keeping pieces of armor and using the app called Destiny Item Manager to figure out the best possible build. This isn't even my current go-to build. I feel as though resilience doesn't matter as much in trials as it does in scrims. So now my current build is actually a 6, 3, 10, 7, 5, 4. Some other examples of stat distributions that I have are an 8, 1, 10, uh, fives across the board on my hunter. Again, that's without powerful friends. These things are achievable using this app. So this video is going to cover what I personally use it for, and we'll jump right into it. Let's get it on! First off, you can just Google Destiny Item Manager. It should be the first link on Google. You click on that. It gives you the option of launching the app or the beta, but the app and the beta are almost identical for what I use it for. So I actually just prefer to use the app. That way I don't have Chrome open. But once you do that, then you're in. I'll start by talking about clearing out your guns. Number two will be about how I treat exotics. Number three, we're going to go off a little bit of a tangent on the comparison tool. Then number four is going to be all about the gear and the filtering system in this. When it comes to guns, a lot of people like to hoard every single single role possible. I was the same way. I still kind of am. Look at all these Ostringers right here. Until I realized that all of Destiny 1 flew by 2,000 years later. And I didn't use 85% of what was in my vault when it came to guns. In D2, the same thing started happening. I was just hoarding and hoarding and hoarding. And I realized the damn game is going to be over. And I'll have never used 85% of these guns. So I got to stop doing that. What I do now is for a very important archetype to me, I'll keep all of the roles that I think could be god roll someday. Now, yes, nobody has a crystal ball. You don't know what the god roll will be, but you generally have an idea. So because I love hand cannons, I kept all of the possible Ostringer rolls that I think could be god rolls someday if they ever decide to make 140s viable. I used to have over a dozen scout rifles in my damn vault for nothing. I hate scout rifles. And even if they became the meta, I wouldn't enjoy it and I wouldn't use them anyway. So I got rid of every single scout rifle. Now you're not looking at a completely clean vault right now, all right? This is a mess right now. And I have lots of these guns that I'm gonna delete, but I've spent enough time on this. Just get rid of guns that you truly don't think you'd ever enjoy using. Another one is fusion rifles. I have no right hanging onto these damn fusion rifles just in case because I really will never enjoy using them. So I'm gonna delete them. On that same token, for some stupid reason, I used to keep every single exotic just because they're exotic and that's cool. Apparently, I still have an issue with that. Practice what you preach, bitch! There's no point, people. You can just buy them from your collections again, especially if it's a gun. You can just rebuy it. If it has the catalyst, maybe you don't want to do that then, but otherwise, why hang on to it? Number three, the comparison tool circles back to guns in the fact that you might say, well, I don't know what a god roll is. I don't know how to compare all of these and decide which one is best and which ones I should keep. Fallout only went full time last Last week he hasn't made videos on all of them yet well that's where dim comes in they have a comparison tool where you just have to click on the gun go to the top right hand corner where
where there's these two squares. And when you do that, it pulls up every single version of that gun that you currently have, whether it's in the vault or in your, on your characters or anything. It pulls all of them up. Usually I'll just compare within itself or its archetype. Now, once you're doing this, it color codes the stat numbers within the guns as good, bad, best, etc. For example, this Ostringer right here has a blue 69 next to stability. It's blue, meaning it's the highest that I have in all of my Ostringers currently. Unfortunately, the comparison tool doesn't take into account what it could be, aka switching up perks, for example, or fully masterworking. It just compares what you currently have for your perks. So usually if I'm trying to see which one has the absolute most range, I go in and I change all of the perks to max range in game, then I'll look at the comparison tool. But anyways, it shows 69 in blue so that you know, okay, that's the highest I can get. 68 here is orange to say it's pretty close, and then red is a certain amount away from that. Numbers in white are even across the board. All of them have 75 aim assist. This is by far the best way, in my opinion, for you to try and compare what you have. And you can get rid of ones. If you think like, oh, you know what? This one sucks. You just hit the X and it goes away. Oh, this one sucks. Hit the X, get rid of it. So you can get it down to, you know, maybe your top three and then you can really focus and it'll recolor code the numbers based on the sample size that you're looking at, which is beautiful. And then you see that tag item drop down. You can actually use that and tag tag the items with a symbol for the ones that you like so they stand out more. On to the gear section. I have a shit ton of it. I'm hoarding right now because it's a new DLC. The filtering system. This is amazing. So many people don't use this. This little guy right here, this little question mark, is your best friend. Let's show you what it can do. I click on this and it tells me every single filtering text, code, whatever you want to call it, that I can input in order to filter and highlight stuff across my gear. I highly recommend you go through this list and you fiddle with them so you get the hang of how they work and which ones you like. The one I'm focusing on today is base stat. This in itself can be used iteratively in so many ways. And I'm going to show you exactly what I do to clear out my vault. I'll do it by showing you step by step by step, but feel free to be way more aggressive when you're doing it. Okay, to show you how that base stat works, take a look at this helmet as an example. If I click on this helmet right here, if you notice, this helmet says it has a stat distribution of 69, but in reality, it was a 59 helmet. And then I just added on a recovery mod, which adds 10 recovery to it, shown in blue here meaning the recovery went from two up to 12 and therefore from 59 to 69. Having mods randomly on your gear can make it a nightmare to try and find the perfect build. The beautiful thing about DIM is that it negates all mods because you can understand that you can add mods on after the fact. And what really matters is a gear's base stat. Okay, sorry for the scuffed recording. I've zoomed in here and I'll probably zoom in and out as I go along, but doing my best here and hopefully I can learn from this. And here's an example of castle video editing. So I start out by using the filter bar. I want to look at base stat. Another beautiful thing from this filtering system is that once I start typing it out, if I'm like, shit, I forget what I'm supposed to type. I don't have to click the question mark every time. It starts telling me what I have available based on what I've typed. I am back. What it do, baby? So I type in base and it tells me all the things that have base in it that I could use. So what I'm looking for is base stat total. I hit tab, it auto fills. Next up, it says, well, what do you want to know about it? Do you want to know all the gear that has a base stat? at total less than a certain number greater than equal to do you want to have equal to and less than or equal to and greater than so this is what i use now before i type this out i want to talk about something a lot of people delete gear with 51 52 53 54 even it's nuts some of my absolute best character builds have one piece of gear that's really low stat distribution because at the end of the day it's about having the perfect combination of stat distributions across all your gear to come to that perfect round number in every single category being mobility, resilience, recovery, etc. So before the new season, I would delete anything that was less than 51. It seemed like all my perfect builds could use a 52 or a 53 often. However, post DLC, so many more drops are coming in at 60, 61, 63, 64 even that I now know that the best builds will no longer use 52 52s, 53s, 51s, or anything like that. But I want to show you an iterative approach 
for exemplary reasons. So for now, I'll just say, I want to look at all my gear that has a stat distribution roll of equal to 52 or less. If I hit enter, bam. Anything with a base stat gear of 52 or less will suddenly be highlighted. Let me zoom out and just show you. This is what it looks like. So this is all my gear. It just highlights all of it. In the new DLC, I can delete all of these ones that are highlighted and feel totally comfortable. Once you've deleted those, the next iterative process would be to check, well, instead of 52, let's bump it up to 54. And you might be thinking, are you kidding me? From 52 to 54, that's barely a difference. This is where things get really important. The first step is getting rid of the bare minimum base rolls and just saying they're shit regardless, right? But there's a point at which the stat distribution becomes more important than the base total. Let me explain why. We're going to use that helmet as an example again. Let's just pretend for a second that this resilience was actually the plus 23 and the mobility was the plus six. Okay, let's just pretend they were reversed. Now for me, I've come to realize post DLC and more so with trials that resilience is less important. In Screams, it's important because if you're up against a thorn every single match and you want to survive that, then you need six resilience. But for now, let's just say there's a stat that you do not care about. In this case, resilience. So this is a 59 base stat. Some people might say that's awesome. I mean, I know that post DLC that they're higher now, but again, back in the day, 59 would have been considered a really good roll. But if it had 23 resilience and that doesn't matter to me, in fact, let's say I usually aim for rolls to have two to four resilience. Well, then that means that this currently has anywhere from 19 to 21 extra stats that I don't even care about. So what's the real base roll for me on this guy? It's actually more like 38 to 40. So this is actually a trash roll if it's got resilience of 23 and mobility of six. So what you have to end up doing is saying, no, no, I want to compare the total stat roll of my armor on the items that I care about. So in this case, I probably would have said, no, this is more like a 40. So now let's look at a different helmet. This helmet only has 53. So it's quite a bit less than the other one that had 59, but it's actually way better. Again, the other one we pretended had 23 resilience and six mobility, even though it was swapped. But in this case, this one only has two resilience. So that other one we said was actually more like 38 to 40. Well, this roll only has two resilience. So it's straight up 53. Remember we said maybe we're okay with rolls that have two to four resilience so that 59 with 23 resilience we said well basically that's 21 above two or 19 above my four that i accept so we subtracted this from the 59 to get these numbers and in this case i'm good with two so i'm not going to subtract anything so now i'm comparing 53 to roughly 40 this piece right here even though it looks like it's six stats less than the 59 is actually more like 13 higher Great Scott. So that is how crucial stat distribution is. Stop paying so much attention to your base role and start paying attention to the combination of your base role and your stat distribution. Now that we know some of the 54 base stat gear could actually be God tier, we need to apply another filter before we go and dismantle all of them. I go up to my filter bar up top, I hit space, I start typing in a second filter on top of the original one, base stat. What do I really care about? I care about recovery. I know that even though I can add five recovery mods on my character, I still need a lot of recovery because I refuse to play with less than 100 recovery. So what does that mean? Maybe I do not want any gear with less than 10 recovery. I don't care how high the stat distribution is. I don't want less than 10 recovery, let's say. It'll look at the base stat of recovery and say anything with less than 10 highlighted. So now what it's doing is it's saying, okay, first let's take a look at all the gear that has 54 base stat. Then out of all of those gear, let's only highlight the ones that have shit recovery based stat. So now I know that these helmets probably all suck. Get shit on kid. And I can delete all of them. Let's take a look. This helmet right here has a base stat of 54, meets the criteria, recovery of eight. This one over here, base stat of 51, recovery of six. So I move all of these over, I delete them. Now there are a lot of combinations of filters that you can do, and I'm not going to run through all of them 
for you, but I highly recommend you just play around with it and see what you like to do. Another good one that you can do is say, well, maybe I won't worry about base stat total at all then. And I'll just say, I want to know what is all my gear that has good base stat recovery. Let's say higher than 14, but also has low resilience because I don't care about resilience. So I'm going to go base stat resilience less than or equal to four. This is the gear that has really good recovery, but really bad resilience, which in my case means good distribution. Here we go. This helmet right here. Okay. It happens to have a high stat base anyway, 60. But what I want to point out is that it had a high recovery base stat and a low resilience base stat. Recovery base stat of 17, resilience base stat of two. Even though it's a 52 helmet, the breakdown of this 52 could be exactly what I need for the perfect build for my Titan. I might have a 56 out there that has a couple too many discipline for my build, but not quite enough mobility. So you can't just look at base stat. In summary, what I usually do when I'm clearing out my vault is I'll start low with just the base stat, the bare minimum, like it used to be 48. Now I'll probably go in and delete all my gear that's 52 and less or 53 and less, let's say. Then I add one filter and say, okay, let's take a look at 54s with low recovery, post those. Then let's look at 55, 56, 57. It goes by super quick after that first haul of deleting. Then once I feel like I've got rid of all of the base stats with low recovery, I'll look at the ones that have high recovery, but high resilience. Maybe those are not that great anyways. And then eventually you get to a point where you have lots of vault space and you're happy. All right, now that you know exactly how to keep the best gear in your vault, you're ready for part two. That'll come out next week, or if you're watching this in the future, it might already be out. And it's all about the loadout optimizer. This tool is extremely incredible and will help you maximize your stat distribution perfectly. Until then, if you made it this far, I really appreciate your support. If you want to join the Discord, there's a lot of us that talk about Destiny in there. If you like the video, please give me some feedback in the comments or subscribe to get notifications when I post every week. And otherwise, have yourself a great day.